It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, FSN Prime Ticket presents the Dodgers as they take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Sunday to you, wherever you may be. Dodgers find themselves in first place, leading the D-backs by a half a game. They've won seven in a row. The D-backs have lost two in a row. The Dodgers have won nine of 17. Last year, they won 10 of the 18 against Arizona, so they're consistent indeed. For the Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw, the young 20-year-old, will go to the mound, but not Randy Johnson, who has a sore shoulder. So they have a 23-year-old by the name of Max Scherzer, and he'll be on the mound for the D-backs. For Arizona, they were in first place a total of 154 days. For the Dodgers, at least for the moment, this would be the 16th day that they're in first place. But as the players say, this might very well be the biggest game of the year so far. We'll get to it. And first, Joe Torre stories right after this. Dodger Baseball on FSN Prime Ticket is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Fees don't fly with us. Visit Southwest.com. By Rico, move your ideas forward with Rico Dependability. By Nissan and your Nissan dealers. And by Carl's Jr. Try the new Prime Rib $6 burger. Served with grilled onions and horseradish sauce only at Carl's Jr. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Sunday to you, wherever you may be, on this warm Sunday afternoon here in Los Angeles. The Dodgers and the D-backs in their final meeting of the regular season, with the Dodgers holding a slight edge. They've won nine of the 17. We always talk about heroes, someone with a home run in a late inning game, but the true heroes are here today. This is Los Angeles Dodgers Heroes Day. Coming through the center field gates, heroes from law enforcement, fire, military organizations in the community, police and sheriff, county fire, city fire, highway patrol, county police, Federal Bureau of Investigation, the United States Marines, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, Los Angeles School Police Department, the Los Angeles Police Emerald Society, Pipes and Drums. So we are privileged, we are honored indeed to have these brave men who stand between us and the enemy, and the enemy can be defined many, many ways. Meanwhile, it pales by comparison, but the Dodgers and the D-backs playing a child's game for grown-up money. And here's the way Arizona lines up. It'll be Stephen Drew at short, then David Eckstein at second, and Adam Dunn at first, Connor Jackson in left field. Chris Young is in center with Mark Reynolds at third, Justin Upton in right field, Chris Snyder the catcher, and a surprise in some ways, Max Scherzer will be on the mound. On mound for the Dodgers, no surprise at all, 20-year-old Clayton Kershaw, who was supposed to go up against 45-year-old Randy Johnson, but instead he'll go up against another pitcher in his 20s, Max Kircher. For Kershaw, against Arizona on the 1st of August, he pitched six shutout innings and had a hard luck, no decision. And he'll be pitching now to Stephen Drew, David Eckstein, and Adam Dunn. So we're about ready to go, and Clayton Kershaw into the windup and deals, pitch low and away as Drew ran up as if to bun. One ball and no strike. Drew hitting 286. The Arizona Diamondbacks have been completely shut down in the first two games. They have eight singles in the two games. That's it. Drew takes a look at a pitch low. Two balls and no strikes. The D backs are eight for 60. That gives them a team batting average of 133 in the previous two games. In fact, the Dodgers have as many extra base hits as the D backs have hits with eight. The pitch to Drew is in for a strike on a check swing. Two and one to Steven, who has 16 home runs, 56 runs batted in, and the proud possessor of having hit for the cycle a few days ago. 2-1 pitch on the way, and Drew swings, lifts one off third, slicing foul. A trio of Dodgers converge, but it's back into the stands out of play. 
the temperature on this warm Sunday afternoon 85 degrees here in Dodger Stadium. One other thing Stephen Drew as he leads off of the D back certainly has enough power with 16 home runs but it points up the fact that the Dodgers enjoying a seven game winning streak have out homered the opposition 14 to 2 and the pitch is going to be looped into left field for a base hit. So Stephen Drew opens up the ball game with a single and while he stands at first we'll check the Dodgers with the leather. James Loney and Blake Dewitt, Angel Barroa and Casey Blake. The outfield, Manny Ramirez, Matt Kemp, and Andre Ethier, and the battery, Kershaw and Martin. So no dramatic changes at all. And now David Eckstein coming up. Eck, as they call him, at five feet six, but has been a big mean on very successful ball clubs. He was the MVP in the World Series two years ago. So X9 waiting, hitting just 222. Shows bunt, pushes the bunt. Loney's going to pick it up and go to second in time for a fours. So I think X9 was really bunting for a base hit. It wasn't like Bob Melvin was sacrificing this early in the game, but he pushed the ball sharply, and Loney alertly had the play ahead of him. So Eckstein bunts into a fours play, three six, one away, and now Adam Dunn checking in. Adam Dunn leads the major leagues. No, not in home run. He leads the major leagues in walks with 107. He's third in power with 35 home runs and 88 runs batted in. Kershaw goes to first base just to keep an eye on Stephen Drew, who has been replaced by Eckstein. And Eckstein has not been involved in a stolen base. He did steal two out of three when he was with Toronto. So Eckstein off the bag, done waiting at the plate. Kershaw a high set up around the collarbone, and the fastball is swung on and fouled away. 0 and 1. The Dodgers got Manny Ramirez, and Arizona got Adam Dunn. And certainly, Manny is getting all of the headlines, but Dunn has done very well. He has done exactly what they needed. Not only home runs. Ramirez on base percentage is 480. Adam Dunn's on base percentage is 479. The fastball is low. The Dodgers swing the infield way around. They don't overload the right side, but almost. Casey Blake is about at the hole at shortstop. Angel Barroa not quite behind the bag at second and then DeWitt in the hole with Loney holding the runner Eckstein. Just starting one out first inning and the one one pitched Adam Dunn is taken low ball two two and one the count. Clayton Kershaw knows he's handling a little dynamite here and Russell Martin going out to talk to him. Dunn has only three home runs so far with Arizona but he ranks fifth in Major League Baseball history in home run rate. Adam Dunn averages a home run one every 13.9 at bats. Just ahead of him is Jen Tomey before that Barry Bonds then Babe Ruth and the top was Mark McGuire. All right the 2 1 pitch coming up Kershaw delivers a curveball but he misses inside big 12 to 6 bender and he goes 3 and 1 to Adam Dunn. Dunn has always had a good eye to walk. He also strikes out a lot of course you pay the price when you hit a lot of home run. The 3 1 pitch to Adam Dunn and Kershaw's fastball is lined down the left field line. Ramirez can't get to it. It's going to roll to the wall of the box seats going into third is X9 on a long double by Adam Dunn. So Eckstein reaches third as Dunn doubles into the left field corner and a somewhat shaky beginning for Clayton Kershaw as Connor Jackson comes up to the plate. So Connor Jackson the right hand hitter checking in after Dunn just hits one inside out with Ramirez shifting over towards left center Manny never had a chance to get near the ball. So second and third one out. Martin again going out to talk to Kershaw and Connor Jackson waiting at the plate. Connor Jackson hitting 294, 12 home runs, 72 runs batted in, raised in the San Fernando Valley, went to El Camino Real High School. 
So Connor trying to take advantage which is another thing that the D-backs have not been able to do and that is get any base hits with runners in scoring position. But of course when you lose both games you know you're not doing well in that department. Jackson has really tailed off the last month and a half. He takes low ball one. In July Connor Jackson was hitting 343. In August and September he's hitting 223. With runners in scoring position in July, he hit 294. Now, 265. And he is without a home run in August and September. He takes high, ball two, after hitting five in July. So for Connor, hitting 294 with his dozen home runs, but it's been a drought. His slugging percentage has almost cut in half from over 560 to under 300. So part of it you always talk about pitchers getting pired and pitchers running out of gas when you get into September but it also affects even the big and the strong who play every day. So Connor Jackson with first base open and Chris Young is on deck. Honeycutt trying to solve a problem. One of the things that Kershaw did last time out it was a tip from Derek Lowe and it had to do with his right hip. What Clayton Kershaw was doing as he was coming out of his windup, he was kind of swinging that right hip, let's say, towards the third base foul line. And Derek Lowe said, keep that right hip on the hitter. So let's see 2 and 0. Oh. He comes back with a pitch in for a strike and the count 2 and 1. It seems like such a simple thing. Just keep your hip more in. But that's exactly what he did, and he was a splendid performer the other night. Now the 2 1 pitch to Connor Jackson. Clayton Kershaw deals very high. Fastball almost got Connor up around the chin. 3 and 1 the count. Second and third, one away. And a fellow who has fallen victim to strikeouts against the Dodgers on deck, that would be Chris Young. Here's the 3 1 pitch to Connor Jackson. Kershaw ready. Clayton delivers. Big curveball drops it in for a strike. He can high oh in the middle 90s with the fastball and then he comes back with a 73 mile an hour curve. So a big pitch three and two with first base open. Kershaw ready Jackson waiting and the three two fastball is high ball four and the bases are loaded for Chris Young with one out. We mentioned the fact that Chris Young has had a lot of trouble against the Dodgers making contact and of course in all honesty he's had a lot of trouble making contact period. Young has struck out one hundred and forty six times but it's pretty unusual to see a player do what he's been doing against the Dodgers. He's had sixty eight at bats against the Dodgers and he has struck out twenty seven times. Kershaw ready and deals breaking ball inside ball one one and oh. So young right up there with fellows who do not like to be in that list and the one oh pitch on the way is foul back one ball and one strike. We're getting a report on Chris Young of San Diego. He had made 76 pitches. He had two out in the eighth inning pitching a perfect game and he lost it on a home run by Gabe Kapler. Here's the one one pitch to Chris Young and that's low and inside ball two two and one. So Kershaw struggling a little bit come to think of it with his ball club trying to stay in first place against the team trying to move them and being 20 years old you would expect him to struggle. Now the 2 1 pitch to Chris Young and that's a fastball low ball three. So for Clayton the adrenaline is pumping I'm sure and he's probably having a tendency to overthrow right now. Kershaw three and one to Chris Young. Kershaw 77 strikeouts 45 walks and the 3 1 pitch on the way swung on a broken bat foul ball back into the stands. Come to think of it that's a rare broken bat in the sense almost always you see a broken bat and the ball winds up in play ground ball somewhere pop fly even a home run we've seen this year. But this time Chris Young has the bat shatter 
And on a foul ball behind the plate. So Young coming back up three and two with one out. If you look at Young's numbers, he has struck out more than twice as many times as he has walked. 146 Ks and only 52 walks. So this is a very big pitch for all involved. Young back up and waiting. Base is loaded, one out, no score. Three and two to Chris Young. Kershaw's fastball is foul back. And hitting back of Chris Young is Mark Reynolds. And Reynolds is another feast or famine hitter. Reynolds has struck out 178 times. So Kershaw has a chance to muscle his way through the inning. Here he comes again, 3 2, and Young swings and fouls it back. Fastball alley, and Kershaw hitting 95 on the gun. So in the inning, if you joined us late, Drew single a left. Eckstein tried to bunt for a hit, bunted into a force play. Dunn doubled into the left field corner, sending Eckstein to third. Jackson walked, and the 3 2 pitch to Chris Young is swung on and popped up. Loney coming down the line, infield throw. Infield fly rule is called, and Young fouls out. And the drought continues for Arizona. So a big at bat, and Kershaw hangs tough. And now with two down, Mark Reynolds. 25 pitches so far expended by the young left hander. Mark Reynolds is a big gun despite all of his strikeouts. He has 27 home runs, that's tops on the team. 92 runs batted in, that's tops on the team. He has scored 83, that's tops on the team. And he has struck out, tops on the team. And Reynolds takes way inside, ball one. The so one ball and no strikes to Mark Reynolds. Hitting only 238, 27 home runs, 92 runs batted in. Eckstein, Dunn, and Jackson out on the lines. Kershaw ready in the 1 0 pitch on the way. High, and that brought Russell Martin out of the crouch to spirit. And I think what Martin is doing is telling Kershaw to settle down, don't overthrow, just trust your pitches, because that thing could have gone to the backstop easily. Mark Reynolds with the bases full does not have a grand slam. The mark waiting with a two ball no strike count. Remember they went three and one to Young and he got him. So waiting out on the lines Eckstein at third Dunn at second Jackson at first two out two balls and no strikes to Mark Reynolds. Kershaw into the wind up Clayton delivers fastball swung on and missed. Not that he dropped down much. He went from 95 to 94. Two and one to count. The so Kershaw heading for close to 30 pitches here in the first inning. Left hander ready. And the 2 1 pitch to Mark Reynolds. Fastball swung on and missed. And that door is open now for Kershaw to get out of the jam against Young and Reynolds. Interesting what this situation could do. If the D-backs score, they're off and running. If they fail to score, the Dodgers get a tremendous lift. 2-2 two -two pitch to Mark Reynolds. Fastball fouled away. So the deuces are wild. Two balls, two strikes, two out. The D-backs have two hits. They have the bases loaded. No score in a very tough first inning. Kershaw in 85 degree sunlight looks in to get a sign. Dodger fans rooting for him. The 2 2 pitch to Reynolds is swung on. Little roll at a third. Blake is on it. Throws to first. For the D backs, a bitter ending to a golden opportunity. And for the Dodgers, if they needed to be revitalized, they have just gotten that as well. And at the end of half an inning, D backs nothing. Dodgers coming up. Clayton Kershaw does a high wire act in the first inning and makes it to the other side. Arizona fails to score. They leave three. Here's the Dodger lineup with Martin, Ethier, and Ramirez, Loney, Blake, and Kemp, DeWitt, Baroa, and Kershaw. On the mound for Arizona, Max Scherzer, S-C-H-E-R-Z-E-R, 0-2. 
He's out of St. Louis, Missouri, lives in Chesterfield, went to the University of Missouri, and turned down the Cardinals when they drafted him out of high school. Right hand is first pitch, fouled away by Russell Martin. Randy Johnson was supposed to start, but he has a sore shoulder, and they thought it ill advised to send him to the mound today. He figures he has four more starts between now and the end of the year. Church is strike one pitch, fastball away, and a one ball, one strike count. Tell you one thing about Max Scherzer he is a victim of heterochromia. Here's the 1 1 pitch on the way. High fly ball to right field going back is up and on the track and makes the catch for the out. So a fly ball to right, one down. Well, supposedly we were going to have two veterans. A 44 year old Randy Johnson, he'll be 45 next week with all of his victories, 294. 42 year old Greg Maddox with 354 victories. But under the headline and heading of the best laid plans of mice and men, we have a 24 year old Scherzer with no wins and a 20 year old Kershaw with three. What a difference a day makes. Anyway, we were talking about heterochromia. The right hander Scherzer delivers and the pitch off the plate to Ethier ball one. And here it is in a nutshell. The two eyes that he has, his right eye is blue and his left eye is brown. Heterochromia. Meanwhile, Andre Ethier hitting 291, 20 home runs, 66 runs batted in. Church is big enough to do the job, 6'3, 195. Max crowding the third base side of the rubber and comes back with a fastball on the outside corner for a strike. And the count two and one to Andre Ethier. Waiting on deck, Manny Ramirez. Ethier backs out as a quick look at Larry Boa. Then Andre gets back in, leading the club 20 home runs, 66 runs batted in. He holds up and takes another strike. And the count two and two. C.B. Buckner, a veteran umpire behind the plate, his 10th year. CB was born in Jamaica in the West Indies came to the U.S. about 35 years ago. 2 2 pitch on the way and Ethia takes very high ball three three and two and waiting on deck and getting larger by the moment is Manny Ramirez. Pretty hard I'm sure for shirts to concentrate on Ethia aware of Manny's presence three two pitch is swung on and fouled away. So probably he keeps the blue eye on the hitter and the brown eye on the on deck hitter. Three and two the count to Andre Ethier. No score bottom of the first inning. Scherzer left foot slightly in front of the right as he stands on the edge of the third base side of the rubber and his three two pitch is swung on and lined into center base hit. Well you talk about ball players sitting on a pitch. And when you hit in front of Ramirez and the count goes three and two, you could just about bet the house you're going to get a fastball. And sure enough, Andre Ethier got one and single, and here comes Manny. Ramirez with five runs batted in yesterday, a three run home run, and then the Sun double, the ball that Upton lost. Manny hitting 621. With five home runs, five doubles, six walks, and 12 RBIs, takes high. He's also scored 12, and he has an on base percentage of 686. I mean, he is just a team photo all by himself. Player of the month, and up there now, hitting 403. The 1 0 pitch on the way. Shirts are very deliberate. Looks over at Ethier. Back to Manny inside. Ball two, two and O. Oh. Home run that Manny hit yesterday gave him 521. Tying him for 17 plays with Willie McCovey, Ted Williams, and Frank Thomas. Next up, double X, Jimmy Fox. The 2 0 pitch on the way. Shirts had delivered, swung on and missed. Two and one. So we have one out first inning. The Dodgers have not only a winning streak of seven straight, they have beaten Arizona four straight and six of the last seven. 
Scherzer looks in no score first inning and Max a high set looks over his left shoulder at Ephia back with a fastball swung on and missed and the count two and two. Well man he proved he was human struck out with the bases loaded yesterday on a great change up from Brandon Webb but then he came up later hit the three run home run and then got the big break on the fly ball lost in the sun. That last pitch by Scherzer by the way was clocked at ninety nine. Young right hand already and the two two pitch on the way fastball is low ball three. We saw Scherzer briefly when the Dodgers were in Arizona. He worked one inning it was the eighth inning of the game and he made twelve pitches retired the Dodgers in order. So Max leans in to get a sign going three and two we'll see about Ethier here with one out and he draws a throw and gets back to the bag. Dodgers trying to do what they did way back in April and May. Remember from the 25th of April to May 3 the Dodgers won eight in a row. Well they come into this game with a seven game winning streak. Now the three two pitch Ethier poised does not go and the ball is whacked into the gap in left center field. This one hits the base of the wall stopping at third is Ethier on the long double by Manny Ramirez. He continues his unbelievable play. So after the D-backs had the bases loaded with one out and came up empty the Dodgers come right back have runners at second and third and one out and face James Loney. You know one of the more interesting things you forget about in looking at the Dodgers like some finely cut diamond the fact that they're actually playing better against teams that are above 500. I think most people think yeah well they've got a winning streak they beat teams like San Diego but over the last 20 some odd games it's been the other way around. James Loney has a look at ball one with Casey Blake on deck. The Dodgers are 13 and 8 in their last 21 against teams above 500. Would you believe they are 5 and 7 against teams under 500. They're going out to play San Diego and Pittsburgh as well as Colorado. Fastball Loney picks up the outside corner and a one ball one strike count. Chad Billingsley. Now I'm sure the acknowledged ace of the Dodgers staff picking up his 14th win. Another brilliant outing. And he'll be seeing the line of duty later on on the trip. Here's the one one pitch coming up to James Loney fastball a broken bat base hit in the center that's going to be good enough for two runs and the Dodgers lead two to nothing on the base hit by James Loney. So it's pretty simple as to what's been going on of late. Arizona doesn't do it and the Dodgers do. So EB is singles Ramirez doubles into third Loney breaks his bat and singles in two and the Dodgers lead two to nothing a bitter beginning for Randy Johnson and the D backs. Now Casey Blake and time out for the moment. I think bits and pieces of that broken bat retrieved by Played umpire C.B. Buckner who gets the good housekeeping clean seal of approval and we're about ready with Blake on deck Matt Kemp Casey hitting 274 eight home runs 20 runs batted in Dodgers out in front two to nothing shirts it deals fastball strike and the count 0 and 1 when shirts has signed his contract to go with Arizona. The contract was worth over four million dollars. So his teammates in the minors called him Max a million. The right hander strike one pitch is swung on and missed and the count 0 and 2. So the D backs had the bases loaded and came up empty and the Dodgers come right back and jump on them for at least two. Oh and two the count to Casey Blake. Shirts are high set up around the face. Now the right handed delivers check swing that will cost a strike and down goes Blake. 
So strikeout number one for Scherzer, two out in the inning, and Matt Kemp coming up. Number 27, Matt Kemp. For the Dodgers, with Clayton Kershaw showing the way today, Dodgers will leave after the game. They have a three-game series in San Diego. Arizona will go to San Francisco for three. Then the Dodgers go to Colorado. Arizona goes home to play Cincinnati and San Francisco. And Matt Kemp swings doesn't get it. Dodgers are in Colorado while they're home with Cincinnati. Dodgers are in Pittsburgh while the D-backs are home with the Giants. So this thing is far from being settled. 0 oh and 1 the count. Scherzer out of a stretch a look over at Loney turns and throws over there. On this road trip the Dodgers going to San Diego. They have beaten San Diego 7 of 12. They go to Colorado. They've won 8 of 15. They go to Pittsburgh. They've won 2 out of 3. Dodgers however are 12 games under on the road. Kemp lifting one back of first down the line a long way to come for Upton and the ball lands foul untouched. Great effort by David Eckstein trying to get to it. Neither man could and Kemp will come back and try it again. The Dodgers again playing teams that well Colorado's doing OK but San Diego and Pittsburgh are not. And that series in Colorado could be very, very important. Colorado begins the day five and a half games back, and they are actually a little bit better on this date this year than they were last year when they made the remarkable run. So don't forget Colorado. 0 oh 2 the count to Matt Kemp. Shirts are again out of his stretch. Another look over at first and throws over there. Loney who was leaning draws the throw. James as far as being a base dealer is concerned has stolen six but he's also been caught four times. No balls and two strikes they count to Matt Kemp another throw to first. Two runs three hits for the Dodgers no runs two hits for the D backs. Both young pitchers struggling Kershaw got away with it. Making 30 pitches, Scherzer has allowed two. Now the strike two pitch to Matt Kemp. Young right-handed delivers high up around the eyes. Ball one, one and two the count. As usual, setting the stage in the inning, the combination Ethier singles and Ramirez doubled him to third. They pitched to Loney with first base open, and he probably broke his bat and drove in two. Now the one two pitch on the way fastball foul back still one and two Kemp fouling off a very good pitch down and in. Interesting too if you Bob Melvin you might want to play the inning over in the sense of pitching to Loney. I mean James is not exactly hamburger hitting 301 with 76 runs batted in they pitched to him and now he has 78 RBIs. Throw to first not in time. And then after Loney, Casey Blake struck out. And here is Matt Kemp and a one ball, two strike count. So I guarantee you in Arizona they're saying, why did he pitch to Loney? Well, it's easy to have hindsight. One and two to Matt Kemp. Two to nothing Dodgers, first inning. Shirts are ready. Here he comes. Fouled away again. Kemp fouling off another very good pitch. Andre Ethier who started the inning getting a three and two fastball for the base hit is hitting 457 in front of Manny Ramirez 457 one ball and two strikes out of a stretch goes Scherzer young Max deals there goes Loney swung on and missed at the plate and that'll be that so of course with Blake and Kemp striking out that poses the problem yet again. Why did they pitch to Loney? And at the end of an inning, 2 nothing Dodgers. 
Two nothing Dodgers second inning Justin Upton Chris Snyder and then Max Scherzer by the way you know the Dodgers will auction off the team's game worn jerseys from today's game during the shirts off their backs auction proceeds benefiting the Dodger Dream Foundation special gift baskets prepared by Dodger players wives containing their husband's favorite items and autograph memorabilia will also be auctioned off today. The pitched up in a strike. They'll be auctioned off from now until 2.45 p.m. just outside of the Dodger press box here on the club level. Upton hitting 247, 11 home runs, 33 runs batted in, and Kershaw in the dirt bounces all the way to the backstop and a one ball, one strike count. Russell Martin hanging tough behind the plate, handling a lot of different pitchers and a lot of different pitches. And one thing, it could be fatigue, although most of him say no. 1 1 pitch, slow curveball in for a strike. Great pitch. Martin before the All Star game was hitting 294. After the All Star game, he's down around 260. He had 10 home runs before the All Star game. He's had two since. So it is not easy back there handling pitches, throwing, running the bases. And by the time you get to September, despite the fact they say he is not tired, you have to figure he'd be more than human if he wasn't. 2 2 pitch on the way is low in the dirt ball three. Now one thing that happened to Max Scherzer in the first inning that did not happen to Clayton Kershaw. Scherzer was hurt on a three ball count. Ethier singled three and two Ramirez doubled three and two. So now let's see three and two to Jay Justin Upton and Kershaw's pitch is chased and missed. That was ball four. So Kershaw gets away with it as Justin Upton chases one out of the strike zone fastball up and away and that means that the Diamondbacks certainly are pressing at the plate without a doubt and the batter is Chris Snyder. So Kershaw nails Upton for his first strikeout. Snyder the right hand hitting catcher hitting just 236. And Kershaw ready comes to him with a pitch low and inside ball one. Schneider with 13 home runs 59 runs batted in from Houston born in Houston lives there went to the University of Houston. Now the 1 0 pitch on the way and it's in the dirt big overhand curve ball that kicks to the backstop two balls and no strikes. Kershaw made 30 pitches in the first inning. He's already made six here in the second. Shirts him made 29 in his first inning. Kershaw's fastball that's in for a strike and the count runs two balls one strike. Chris Snyder 0 for 2 yesterday 0 for 4 in the series and the 2 1 pitch is low ball three so here's another three ball count. Snyder hitting only 216 against left handers. With runners in scoring position, he's hit better than 290. 3 1 pitch, and Snyder swings and drives one to the gap in left center field with a lot behind it. It is gone. So Chris Snyder hits one into the seats in deep left center field, and the Dodger lead is cut to 2 to 1. Snyder's 14th home run and his 60th run batted in. Whoever caught the home run promptly throws the ball back on the field. So with one out, Dodgers two, D-backs one on the 14th home run, and that was a three ball count, remember? It was three and one. The so Kershaw working now on Max Scherzer. And the young pitcher, his opposite number, takes low, ball one, one and oh. Remember the other night, one of the key at bats was when Derek Lowe walked in the second inning. The next pitch is strike, and the count goes one ball and one strike to Max Scherzer. Maximilian. Right hander hits the same way. The one one pitch, Max takes high, ball two, two and one. Kershaw did not pitch this way his last time out. 
He was throwing strikes that night, made 99 pitches into the eighth inning and walked only three. Fastball is low, so he's overthrowing whatever, and he's had another three ball count. So three and one to Snyder, who homered. Now he's three and one with Scherzer. Two to one in favor of the Dodgers. Three one pitch is a strike. Three and two. Stephen Drew waits on deck. D backs have hit the skids. They've not just lost two straight in this series, they've lost 10 of the last 14. Scherzer, and meanwhile, fouls it away. So just as the Dodgers looked so awful on their last road trip and then completely turned it around, Bob Melvin is hoping that the D backs who look awful right now will be able to turn it around. 3 2 pitch is strike three call. So down goes Scherzer. Second strikeout for Clayton Kershaw. And he'll now concentrate on Stephen Drew, the single on left field in the first inning. The D backs are still doing well against Western Division. They're 12 games above. The Dodgers are six games above within the division. Neither team has done very well outside of the division, however. And the pitch to Stephen Drew, a strike. Outside playing everybody else, Arizona is 36 47. That's 11 games. The Dodgers are four games under 500 against everybody else. So it's not over yet, not by, uh, by any shot, as Drew fouls it away 0 and 2. And Joe Torrey and Bob Melvin certainly know that, although the Dodgers feel that this is an extremely important game. If they can win today, they'll be a game and a head, a game and a half ahead of Bob Melvin. Strike two pitch is high, ball one. If the Dodgers lose, Arizona gets back into first place. Psychologically, a big push on their behalf. One and two to count to Stephen Drew. Kershaw deals, fastball grounded to the right side. Blake DeWitt is on it, and that's that. So Chris Snyder took him downtown for one, and at the end of an inning and a half, Dodgers two, D backs one. Dodgers two, Arizona one, the home run by catcher Chris Snyder. And in the bottom of the second inning, it'll be Blake DeWitt, followed by Angel Barroa, and then Clayton Kershaw. Max Scherzer into the windup right hand his fastball is low and gets away from Snyder who might have hurt himself a little bit. I think he got that on the right hand he did. One ball and no strikes. It is a brutal job back there especially by the time you get to September when you realize you've been handling pitches since the end of February. And of course Russell Martin empathizing as he sits in the shade of the dugout. One ball and no strikes to Blake DeWitt. Scherzi comes back with a pitch that promptly stroked the right field, lands in front of Justin Upton. So a base hit for DeWitt, beginning matters in the second inning. We mentioned about the fact that Scherzi has heterochromia, and for those watching on television, you can see his right eye is blue, and his left eye is brown which ruins that song about don't that make your brown eyes blue. I mean he has nowhere to go with that. Runner at first nobody out on Hill Barrow at the plate and Kershaw on deck. Scherzer out of a stretch looks over his shoulder comes to Barroa and jumps in there for a strike. Oh and one the count Barroa for the last week is hitting 391 believe it or not so he has his average up to 240. He has started each of the last seven so this is his eighth straight game at short. Strike one pitch on the way and that's taken low and inside breaking ball that didn't move enough one ball and one strike. Not only the last week in talking about Baroa as he faces Scherzer in his last 13 games. He's hit 368. Feeling a lot more like the rookie of the year five years ago. Throw to first, DeWitt back on the bag. 
Dodgers scored two in the first inning and that's what they've done all year long scoring in the first inning or well, not every time but they've scored 112 runs in the first inning this year. The one one pitch on the way time was going to be called by Burrow and he didn't back out. If we take a look at that tape you'll see he was holding his right hand up asking for time. Watch his hand come off the bat right there. Time, oh, well and then swings. So of course what you do is you get out of there but he stayed in the box and holding up the hand didn't help. One and two to Angel Barroa. Do it at first nobody out two to one Dodgers. Shirts his fastball golfed at and missed. Down goes Burrow and I guarantee you he feels he was robbed of that one strike. Third strikeout for Scherzer. He's got a great arm. First time we saw him in Arizona, that one inning, he was very impressive. Of course, he wasn't too impressive in the first inning today. 29 pitches for two runs, but he did finish up striking out Blake and Kemp, so he has three. Now Kershaw and the D-backs look bun. Clayton had three sacrifices in his last game. And he takes high ball one. The Dodger record for sacrifices in a nine inning game by a pitcher, Tom Candiotti, quite a few years ago. So Kershaw has seven sacrifices. He has just one hit. Shows bunt again. Scherzer set, ready, deals, fastball bunted at the feet of Adam Dunn, who had a play, and then the pitcher, Scherzer, was in his way. And Adam Dunn was all set to throw to second, but there was Scherzer in his line of fire. So Adam had a throw to first. So the Dodgers get a big break. We'll see just how big. Soon as it was short hop, you knew Dunn had the play, but whoops, there is Scherzer standing between him and the throwing lane. So he had to go to first and almost threw it away there. So Kershaw gets his eighth sacrifice. Dunn thoroughly frustrated at second shirts I guess is thankful he didn't get hit between the eyes and the batter is Russell Martin. The DeWitt at second with two out two to one Dodgers second inning and a breaking ball in for a strike. Interesting the Dodgers with runners in scoring position in the series have turned six hits into 14 runs batted in. They've had several multiple RBI hits in the clutch. So six of 17 good for 14 RBIs. Martin trying to pick up DeWitt and shirts it back with a fastball in there and he jumps out in front 0 oh and 2. Dodgers 2 D backs 1 second inning. Russell back up hitting 281 12 home runs 60 runs batted in. Scherzer again out of his stretch. Another look back. DeWitt has a good lead. Scherzer ready, delivers, and it's foul back. So the count stays, no balls and two strikes. Interesting that Martin is up there now. We were talking earlier. Before the All-Star game, he had 45 RBIs. He's had 14 since. Before the break, 27 extra base hits. Since seven. But up there with a chance now to pick up a run. And the strike two pitch to Russell Martin. Instead, Scherzer backs off the rubber and looks back at DeWitt. Two down, second inning. Dodgers two, D backs one. DeWitt single to right and should have been forced at second, but instead he's out there. Adam Dunn, no doubt, muttering to himself. Martin fouls another pitch back. And the count remains 0 and 2. Scherzer made 29 pitches in the first inning. So Bob Melvin keeping track of his pitches. Just as the Dodgers count Kershaw, he's made 52 in two innings. 0 and 2 to Russell Martin. Scherzer high set right handed deals pull foul down the line he came up and in and boy did Martin turn on that thing. Russell picking up an RBI in each of the last four games and he has an opportunity to extend it to five. 
No balls and two strikes to Russell Martin. Andre Ethier on deck. The strike two pitch coming up. Scherzer delivers a ground ball back a third. Up with it there is Reynolds and makes the throw. So no runs, one hit, a man left at second base. And at the end of two, it remains Dodgers two, D backs one. Dodger baseball on FSN Prime Ticket is brought to you by the Lexus Hybrids and the Power of H. Third inning, Dodgers two and the D-backs one. Clayton Kershaw in the heat has made 52 pitches in two innings. Max Scherzer has made 42 pitches, and we go to the third. We just wanted to finish up on Chris Young. With two out in the eighth inning, Chris Young had a perfect game going, and he lost it on a home run by Gabe Kapler. The Padres led 10 to 1 following the home run. Young twice before had taken no hitters into the eighth inning once even into the ninth. Meanwhile the pitched Eckstein a strike. And interesting the Padres the Rays the Rockies and the Mets remain the only major league clubs not to have a no hitter. Oh and one the count Eckstein bunted into a force play swings doesn't get it. Oh and two the count. Dodgers two runs four hits D backs one run a home run by Chris Snyder. Now the strike two pitch on the way and David probably whacks it to left Ramirez moving to his right reaches up and spears it. So Manny Ramirez so when running into the dugout the other day after making a running catch hollering gold glove gold glove well it looked like a gold glove on that play one away. So Ramirez who has done a very good job you know when he came to Los Angeles a lot of people said yes he will hit but how is he going to play without that green monster right back of him well he has played very well Adam Dunn takes high ball one Dodgers load up the right side of the infield do it a good 10 feet out on the grass and right field and Casey Blake all alone between second and third and a little pop fly going foul and out of play off third. Young felt a uh, twang so Dunn is going back to get a new bat didn't break but it cracked. Sounded a little bit like a celery stalk so he gets a new one. One ball and one strike to Adam. Dunn is wearing sunglasses that looks like it's right out of the commercial from a highway patrolman in the deep south pulling over the driver. You know the kind when you can see your own reflection in it. The one one pitch he takes low and inside ball two two and one. Dodgers two D backs one third inning Ramirez just took a possible extra base hit away from David Eckstein. The next one is low and inside. So for Kershaw he has now had seven three ball counts. He has to be very very careful pitching that way. Three and one to Dunn with his thirty five home runs. Kershaw deals and it swung on and fouled away. Three and two the big Adam. For one year struck out a lot. 195 times but that was the year when they studied his strikeouts they realized that he was caught looking a third of the time the three two pitch is swung on and driven to left center field and deep how deep back into the bleachers in left center and just like that it's a two two tie and that was on a three and two pitch the other home run hit by Chris Snyder was on a three and one pitch. And you just can't keep pitching on three ball counts in the big league. Sooner or later, they'll jump all over you. Dunn got a three and two fastball at the knees and hits it out. For Adam Dunn, his 36th home run, 89 runs batted in, and we have a 2 2 tie. So the batter now, Connor Jackson, who walked in the first inning. How important is that count? Well, we'll just go back over it a little bit. 
The pitch to Connor Jackson is high ball one. When Dunn doubled in the first inning, that was on a three and one count. When Snyder homered in the second inning, that was on a three and one count. And when Dunn homers here in the third, that was on a three and two count. Case closed. Meanwhile, Connor Jackson fouls it off and a one ball, one strike count. 2 2 in the third. Kershaw back with a fastball on the inside corner at the knees and one and two the count. So big Adam Dunn, 36 home runs because he figures to hit 40. He does that a lot. The one two pitch on the way is swung on and missed and down goes Connor Jackson. We say that Dunn has hit 40 and has done that a lot. In 04 Dunn hit 46 and then in 05 06 07 each year he hit 40. Well now he has 36 so he's zoning in on that number. 2 2 here in the third two down. And Chris Young at the plate. And he probably lifts a foul ball off first down the line, heading for the stands and out of play. And the count 0 and 1. Young had a great opportunity to get the D backs off on the right foot. He came up in the first inning with the bases loaded, one out, the bench cheering, broke his bat, fouled off several, and then popped up to Loney. And then Mark Reynolds came up and grounded out and the inning was over. Fastball down and away. One and one the count to Chris Young. Hitting 244. Kershaw already comes back with that off speed curve but this one stayed inside. Now the 2 1 pitch on the way fastball hit to straightaway center Kemp started back but then comes in to make the catch so they shut young down yet again. However one run one hit one swing of the bat by Adam Dunn on a three and two pitch and it's a 2 2 tie. Adam Dunn responding to the importance of the game as a double and a home run. His home run ties up the game 2 2, and we go to the bottom of the third. Andre Ethier, Manny Ramirez, and James Loney. By the way, Kershaw gave up the tying run, but he also cut his pitch count down. He made 16 pitches in the third inning. Ethier has a look at a breaking ball for a strike. Count went three and two to Andre in the first inning and he got a fastball and promptly single to center. And then Ramirez came up and doubled to the base of the left center field wall. Scherzer right back with a breaking ball pulled down the right field line hooking as it goes down the line and foul. It reached the seats foul by a couple of feet. Ted Barrett was running way down the line to make the call and the umpire had the best view of it. That was awfully close for 21. The Ted right there to make the call. No balls and two strikes to count. Can't cut it much closer. Missing the pole, reaching the stands by a couple of feet foul. All right, 0 and 2 the count to Andre Ethier. Shirts are into the windup. Now the strike two pitch up and in, ball one. One and two the count. Well after coming breaking ball in and a near home run then a pitch up around the chin. We'll see if he works down and away or not. The one two pitch deep here fastball down and away and the count two balls and two strikes. Heath here batting 292 20 home runs 66 runs batted in scored a run in the first inning as Manny doubled him to third. The next pitch off speed and Ethia way out in front of it and strikes out. So one away and Ramirez coming up. You know, September 21st, Fan Appreciation Sunday, Dodgers and Giants at 110. All fans who attend had the chance to win great prizes all game gift certificates, weekend getaways, memorabilia that's autographed, Dodger season tickets, or brand new Toyota Matrix. 
For tickets, visit Dodgers.com or call 866-Dodgers. Here's Manny and looks at a strike and the count on one. Ramirez doubled E for you to third and then they pitched Deloney with first base open and James singled in the two. Scherzer into his windup and the strike one pitch and that's on the inside corner 0 and 2. So no balls and two strikes to Manny Ramirez doesn't say anything but he backs out and just looks at C.B. Buckner. Manny hitting 408. Now the strike two pitch on the way and that's high ball one one and two. Scherzer by striking out Ethier has struck out four. And Manny with a one and two count waiting at the plate. Now the one two pitch on the way swung on and missed and down goes Ramirez. So that's five strikeouts for Max Scherzer. As we mentioned earlier he's got a great arm and he was so impressive when we saw him in Arizona. I mean the ball just comes out of his hand so nice and easy. So with two down in the third inning and a 2 2 tie here's James Loney broke his bat and had a two RBI single in the first inning. Dodgers two D backs two. shirts are ready and the first one wrinkles but stays outside ball one one and oh totals are identical two runs four hits and no errors for each side. The 1 0 pitch on the way and Loney fouls it back. The Dodgers are heading for San Diego and they get a good break in this respect. Jake Peavy pitched yesterday against Milwaukee and Ben Sheets. He lost one to nothing, but the important thing for the Dodgers, again, they'll have a series with San Diego and they will not face Jake Peavy. Here's the 1 1 pitch and Loney takes low. Another thing. Arizona is going to San Francisco and they will see Tim Lincecum and unless there is a dramatic change by the Giants in their rotation the Dodgers will not see Lincecum Two one pitch is a strike. The last time the Dodgers faced Colorado they did not see Aaron Cook their ace. So it's not diminishing their efforts. It's just talking about the fact for one reason or ten they're missing some of the aces of the pitching staff. Little chopper charging X time picks it up throws to first to get him and the Dodgers are done in the third inning. No runs no hits six in a row retired by Scherzer and we have a 2 2 tie. Here's today's Aflac trivia question. The Dodgers as you know have seven straight wins. What is their record for the longest September winning streak. Well, we'll give the answer later on. Right now, they've won seven straight. They're in first place for the first time since April the 4th. They have a four game winning streak against Arizona. They've won six straight at home. Mark Reynolds, Justin Upton, and Chris Snyder checking in against Clayton Kershaw. That's right. Reynolds with the bases loaded grounded out to end the first inning. Slow curveball and he drops that in. Oh and two boy that's a terrific pitch. Clayton trying to avoid a three ball count. Ball one. Three and one to Dunn, a double. Three and one to Snyder, home run. Three and two to Dunn, home run. So he jumps out in front of Reynolds, one and two. Two and two. Kershaw made 68 pitches in the first three innings. And here he goes again. A three ball count. That's the eighth one that he's had already. 
Waiting on deck, Justin Upton. And that's going to be a flare into left field, base hit. So Reynolds, a single to left, and goes on to second base and beats the throw. So Reynolds cracked the bat. You could hear a twang up here. And then he just steals second base on Manny Ramirez. Little flare to left. Manny comes jogging in, does what a lot of them do, took something for granted, dropped the ball, and Reynolds alertly hesitated and then moved into second. We'll see if they're going to give Manny an error to account for the presence of Reynolds at second. Nothing yet. And here is Upton. The bunt in the air foul. And it will be a single to left, and then rightly so. An error charge to Manny Ramirez. For Ramirez, that would be his second error as a Dodger. So a tiebreaker at second, nobody out. Upton struck out in the second inning. Two runs, five hits for the D-backs, two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. And a high chopper speared by Kershaw to get him. And over to third goes Reynolds. So if nothing else, Upton got his man over and gets some fives in the dugout as a reward. He almost hit that over Kershaw's head. So here is Snyder on a three and one count, hit a home run in the second inning. Chris with 14 home runs, 60 runs batted in, and it's a career high, one more than last year. Infield has to play in, fouled away. Snyder is certainly big enough to hit 14 home runs. He's 6'3, 230. Drafted by the Mariners but opted to accept a scholarship to go to Houston. Oh and one the count. Infield up outfield almost straight away split however Kemp shading to right center. One ball and one strike. After Snyder Max Scherzer. D backs had the bases loaded with one out in the first inning and couldn't score. For Kershaw, with a runner at third, is always a concern. He has five wild pitches. At the ready, Mark Reynolds. Ball two. Snyder checking with Chip Hale and then goes over to say something to Mark Reynolds. Snyder has three sacrifices and he has five scoring fly balls. Curveball and two and two. Because he's making so many pitches and it is hot, the Dodgers are going to back up Kershaw, Ramon Troncoso in the Dodger bullpen. Of course, Clayton grew up in the Dallas area. It certainly gets plenty hot there. Two and two. Big at bat for Snyder and for the ball game. Breaking ball fouled away. So that's two breaking balls in a row. And the count stays two and two. Three times in his career, Snyder has had back to back home runs in August against Colorado, and then the next day he hit one in Houston. Two and two. Fastball missed. So after two curveballs, he goes to a three ball count. Look out, that's number nine. 
Schneider hit a home run on a three and one count. Scherzer on deck. Dodgers two, D backs two. We're in the fourth inning. Reynolds down the line from third. Big pitch here. Breaking ball whacked down the left field line. A one hopper going to the box seat wall. The run scores easily. And into second base goes Snyder with the long double on a three and two curveball. So it has really become a litany of frustration for Kershaw. A three and one double to Dunn, a three and one home run to Snyder, a three and two home run by Dunn, and a three and two double by Snyder. Nine three ball counts for Clayton. Rick Honeycutt going out. And the D backs so thoroughly frustrated in the first inning when they blew a golden opportunity have come from behind two to nothing to take a three to two lead. Max Schertz here the pitcher is listening to Chip Hale with one out as to what he might try to do have no idea about Schertz whether he can swing the bat or not in looking up his numbers he's had seven at bats prior to today so he is 0 for 8 and he has struck out two of the eight times so at least for the moment you say well 25% He's not a bad hitter as far as making contact and if you make contact you never know. So you have Big Snyder at second with a double and his second run batted in. And a high chopper to the right side so if nothing else he gets his man over to third. As shirts are grounds out, and that was probably part of the conversation with Chip Hale. See if he can't go the other way. So Snyder is Stephen at Drew. third, two out, and Stephen Drew coming up. Stephen Drew single a left in the first inning and grounded to Blake DeWitt in the second. So he's one for two, hitting 287. In the dirt. Nice save by Martin again with a runner at third. Pressure on Russ to block those pitches in the dirt. Schneider at third, two out, three two D backs, fourth inning. One and oh. Fastball, and he missed two and oh. On deck, David Eckstein. Two and oh. And a strike. Two and one. Drew, 16 home runs, 56 runs batted in, and a very solid 287 batting average. Sliced foul out of play. Facing Kershaw or left handers. Stephen Drew hitting close to 270. Right hand pitching, he's hitting 295. Two balls, two strikes. Curve ball fouled away. That big 12 to 6 rainbow curve. Interesting that Stephen Drew with a lot of extra base hits. He's tied for third in the majors in triples and fifth in doubles. And got him. On the outside corner, Steven started his swing, held up, and C.B. Buckner rings him up. Drew arguing with the plate umpire, but not a heated argument, and it's 3 2 Arizona. Dodger Baseball on FSN Prime Ticket is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Fees don't fly with us. Visit Southwest.com and by your Southern California Ford dealers. See what's new at SC4Dealers.com.
D-backs lead the Dodgers three to two bottom of the fourth inning. Clayton Kershaw sitting in the Dodger dugout when he pitched against San Diego. He made 99 pitches having faced two batters in the eighth inning. Today he's made 92 pitches in four innings. And you bet there's a big difference between pitching against San Diego and Arizona. So the Dodgers now will have Blake Kemp and DeWitt. That's right. Casey struck out in the first inning. Scherzer has five strikeouts. Three runs, six hits for the D backs, two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. Fastball, one and one. Casey, eight home runs, 20 RBIs, hitting 272. Missed inside, ball two. Scherzer coming into this inning, only 56 pitches. Two and two the count to Casey Blake. Fastball got him looking. So Casey Blake rung up a second time. At six strikeouts for Max Scherzer. Fielder, number 27. By the way, remember our Aflac trivia question talking about winning streaks? Dodgers have seven straight. What's their record for longest September Aflac. winning streak? And the answer is 13. Way back in 1965, that was the time of Drysdale and Koufax. And then they went on to beat Minnesota in the 1965 World Series. That's right. That was that great moment in Minneapolis. It had rained all night, early morning. And when the Dodgers were getting ready to start the game, they had two pitchers warming up in the bullpen. Don Drysdale and Sandy Koufax. And everybody kept wondering who is Alston going to start. Well, he opted to start Koufax because he knew if Sandy had trouble, it wouldn't take Drysdale very long to heat up back on him. And in that game, among other things, there was a brilliant play by Jim Gilliam playing third base. Made the play, taking an extra base hit away from Zoyo Versailles. And then, after Gilliam made that great play to end the inning, they took him out for defensive purposes. <laughs> Only the Dodgers. 3-2 in favor of the D-backs. Fourth inning, one out. One and two the count to Matt Kemp. Boy, I'll tell you what. Dodgers have their hands full with this young fella from the show me state of Missouri, Max Scherzer. He has seven strikeouts and just looks like he's getting better. Took him a while in the first inning. He got a tough break when Loney broke his bat and singled a drive in two. But since then, wow. So here's Blake DeWitt. Another thing, just for a moment, about that 1965 club. The Dodgers were in third place that year, four and a half games out. And the streak started on the 16th of September. And when that streak ended, they were two games out in front in first place. And during the streak, one last note, Sandy Koufax had three shutouts during that streak. That's a strike. Mitch Reinhardt. The magician down in the Dodger truck bringing up those interesting notes. I'm having trouble remembering breakfast this morning, so Mitch, thanks. Two and two the count to Blake DeWitt. Two down, fourth inning. Eight in a row retired by Max Scherzer. Light breeze blowing from left to right. Well, 
He just strikes out the side. He now has eight strikeouts. That's the kid we thought looked so impressive when we're in Arizona. He's even more so now. 3 2 D backs. In case you missed it, the bottom of the first inning, James Loney broke his bat. First base was open, and he drove in two to give the Dodgers a two to nothing lead. However, Big Chris Snyder hit a home run. Adam Dunn had a double and a home run. And when the dust finally settled, Arizona had taken a three to two lead at the expense of Clayton Kershaw, who made 92 pitches and now surrenders the ball to Scott Proctor. So Proctor, who is due to bat second in the fifth inning, and the chances are he's asked to pitch one inning. He'll be facing David Eckstein, Adam Dunn, and then Connor Jackson. So David Eckstein, Sanford, Florida boy who went to the University of Florida, was originally drafted by the Red Sox and, of course, made quite a reputation hustling for the Angels. Four years with the Angels, three with the Cardinals, with the Blue Jays, and now with the D-backs. And at 5 6 1 7. Ball one. One ball and no strikes. Ball two. His mom and dad, the Ecksteins, had two boys. And they loved the Ozzy and Harriet show, so they named the boys Ricky and David. And here's David. That's a strike. There was one problem in the Eckstein family, however, and it was a terrible problem to have illness, kidney failure, both his brother and two sisters. Though they are battlers. Ball three. David hit into a force play in the first inning. Hit one hard in the third and Manny Ramirez made a fine running catch that had double all over it. Three and two the count. Waiting on deck Adam Dunn. Little ground ball Blake DeWitt. One away. Now Adam Dunn. In the story today you get a three ball count on Adam Dunn and you are the one who will be done. In the first inning three balls one strike. Dunn doubled into the left field corner. In the third inning count went three balls two strikes. He hit a home run. Into the seats in left center. Dodgers load up the right side. And looking at Proctor versus Dunn, Dunn has had one at bat against Scott and struck out. Two balls and no strikes. Adam, 36 home runs, 89 runs batted in. He's walked 107 times, and he has struck out 141 times. So he is a very, very good on base percentage right there with Manny. Now, 3 and 0. Oh. They might very well green light him. It's a question of whether he likes the location or not, especially with his eye for the strike zone. Yep, you figured he'd go after it. 3 and 1. He homered in a stretch of 5 straight back in May when he was playing for the Reds. Joining three great names in Cincinnati history. Ground ball alone. He'll do it himself. Who are the three names he joined? Ken Griffey Jr., Johnny Bench, and Big Clue, Ted Klazuski. And here comes Connor Jackson now, as done is done. Connor walked, struck out, 0 for 1. Connor Jackson. So Proctor got away with a three and one count to get done.
Three runs, six hits for the D backs, two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. That's fouled out of play, 0 and 1. Kershaw went four innings, gave up three runs, six hits, one walk, four strikeouts, but he gave up of those six hits, two home runs, and two doubles. One and one. The Proctor, the doctor, trying to get some outs here. Then he is due to bat second in the fifth inning. Chances are they might go to the bench. Fastball, sliced foul down the line. One and two. Don't forget the Dodgers hit the road. They'll play tomorrow night in San Diego, then Colorado and Pittsburgh. So we are running out of home dates. Dodgers will be back Friday night, the 19th, against the Giants. The weekend with San Francisco and then three with San Diego. Trouble in River City. That's going to drop. So Connor Jackson, a two out fly ball single. And the battle will be Chris Young. Chris Young. Chris Young is 0 for 2. Down in the Dodger bullpen, Chan Ho Park and Jason Johnson. Young hitting in the 220s against right hand pitching. Probably as good a game as he's had a while was on the 30th of August. He had three hits against the Dodgers. He can run like the wind. He has 39 doubles, but as you know, he strikes out an awful lot. And ball one. With two out, the thought of Jackson stealing is a very good thought. He has stolen eight out of ten. Lee Tinsley over to say something to Connor, who has a very conservative lead. Not gone. And it's a strike. One and one. Of course, with a hitter like Young, you can't really put plays on like hit and run. If Jackson's going you would figure it's a straight steal. One ball one strike another short lead for Connor. Young followed by Reynolds. Ball two. You know, just thinking, that's a tough combination. Chris Young followed by Mark Reynolds. They have 324 strikeouts between them, just those two. And then, of course, there was Joe DiMaggio. One year had 30 home runs, struck out 13 times. Two and one. And pop foul out of play. But how about that back to back? 324 strikeouts. Joe struck out 360 times in his entire career. And each man will make so much more money than DiMaggio ever made. It is mind boggling. Two and two. D backs three, Dodgers two. How do you do? So that is the 28th time that Chris Young has struck out 28 in 71 at bats against the Dodgers, and the D backs still lead 3 to 2.
three two Arizona bottom of the fifth inning on hell Barroa and then Delwyn Young will bat for Proctor and Russell Martin ball one. Baroa struck out in the second inning. Remember when he tried to call time, didn't back out, and then swung belatedly at a fastball. Two and all the count. Scherzer has retired nine in a row since DeWitt single in the second inning. He has struck out eight, striking out the side in the fourth inning. Strike. In direct contrast to Clayton Kershaw, who had nine three ball counts, Scherzer has only had two. Two and one. Remember how the game started one out. Ephier singled, Ramirez doubled, Loney singled. But since then, the Dodgers are one for 11 with eight strikeouts. Uh, Megan nine. Wow. I tell you what he is really one of the more promising pitchers we've seen all year. Max Scherzer. How long you can keep it up in this 85 degree weather is another story but what an arm he has. No wonder he signed that major league deal for four million and got the nickname Max a million. He's special. He really is. He is now struck out. Four in a row, six of the last seven. And here's Delwyn Young. Ball one. Delwyn hitting 248, a home run, six runs batted in. Family calls him Pee Wee. Of course, strikeouts and strikes take a lot of pitches. Scherzer came into this inning having made 71. Wow. One and two. Two and two the count. Scherzer from June into late July was on the DL his right shoulder inflamed and fatigue he missed five weeks but he's really he's really putting on his show now that's 10 strikeouts for him 10 strikeouts five in a row and seven of the last eight hitters but he's only in the fifth. And of course, Arizona has a very, very wobbly bullpen. Ball one. Russell flied to right, grounded to third. That's a strike. One and two. And popped in the air foul. No play that'll be back in the crowd. Talking before about the Arizona bullpen and the fact that shirts are carrying the weight to stay in. The West might very well have seen Arizona run away except for some shaky work. Arizona relievers their winning percentage is last in the major leagues. Two and two. Their starters are OK. They're 11th in the majors, but the relievers really struggling. So it's up to Scherzer to eat up the innings. Two and two. 
Wow. He strikes out the side in back to back innings. He now has 11 strikeouts. The name is Scherzer, Max Scherzer, and at the end of 5, 3 2, Arizona. On this day in 2001, Sean Green hit two home runs that gave him 44. He finished up the year with 49 home runs. And three years later, Adrian Beltre also hit 49 to tie Green's record. And with that, let's go take a look at this one. Coming out of the Dodger bullpen is Chan Ho Park. If we have a second, asking Brad and Dustin, if we could look at that last pitch to Russell Martin, you might get an idea of what's going on here. I mean, even Martin turned to talk to the ump. Watch this pitch break in. Now, we had a close-up of that pitch. Look at this. See how it sails in? And Martin couldn't believe it. He turned around. What was that? What kind of a pitch? It really was remarkable. And so was a young man named Max Scherzer. He has struck out 11. He has struck out the side consecutive innings, so six in a row. And he has struck out eight of the last nine batters he's faced. S C H E R Z E R. As fine a young pitcher as we have seen. Boy, he is something. Wow. Chan Ho Park working on Mark Reynolds, Justin Upton, and then Chris Snyder. Chan Ho, four and three in his 45th game. Off speed, whacked to left. That's over Manny's head, and it is off the wall. Ramirez playing the carom and hustling into second is Reynolds with a double. He got an off speed pitch, and he was all over that. So for the D backs, they've had two home runs. They now have three doubles. And all Manny could do is play it not off the green monster, off the blue sign. Nobody out. Upton, Snyder, and Scherzer trying to move him around. And Chan Ho wants a new ball. I think the other one had a dent in it. So C.B. Buckner puts a new one in play. Eight hits now for the D backs. Six against Kershaw, one against Proctor, and now one against Park. We're in the sixth. Three to two, Arizona. By the way, just to think a little bit more about Scherzer, Max has made 87 pitches in five innings. 17 pitches an inning. And is high in pitches this year, 102. So we'll keep an eye on the pitch count with Scherzer. Meanwhile, Upton has struck out and hit back to the box. High chopper. Kershaw made a good play to get him in the fourth inning. One and one. One ball and one strike, Upton. Now they're starting to heat up the bullpen if you can use the word heat. But somebody's just getting up now and beginning to throw. It might be John Roush. We'll take a look down there. Meanwhile, the Dodgers have Joe Bimel in their pen. 3-2 Arizona, and it is John Roush. So the dangerous three ball count three and one to Justin Upton.
Upton has 11 home runs, 33 runs batted in. Foul back, three and two. Upton, a young ball player. He's only 21. He was 21 in August. You may remember last year, as young as he was, he had 327 in the playoffs. His brother BJ with Tampa Bay. Three and two. Got him. So Upton fails to move his man along, and no doubt one of the D backs problems for quite a while. You know, the Dodgers, Coca Cola, and Toyota okay. invite you to Dodger yeah, Stadium. Amazing. Celebrate this the amazing. colors and flavors of Hispanic culture at the Viva Los Dodgers Festival. That'll be Saturday, the 20th at 1 o'clock. Buy a ticket to that night's game against the Giants, and you are in. Visit Dodgers.com or call 866 Dodgers. So a big strikeout, and now here is Snyder. Who homered and doubled on three ball counts. Right. On a three and one count in the second inning, Chris Snyder hit a home run. On a three and two count in the fourth, he doubled and doubled in the go ahead run, Reynolds. And there goes the run at the third. The pitch is low. The throw is not in time. So Mark Reynolds steals third big play for Reynolds. He is 10 for 10 in stolen bases. Just did stay on the bag his left knee making contact. So now Snyder who has some scoring fly balls. He has five of them up there with a runner at third one out. One ball and one strike. On deck, Max Scherzer, the pitcher. And that's ball two. So Chan Ho trying to keep that runner at third, right at third. 3 2 D backs, top of the sixth. And squeeze, and it's missed at the plate. And naked unto the world is Mark Reynolds, tagged out by Russell Martin. So Bob Melvin trying to squeeze the run in, and he gets burned. The so Reynolds is cut down on the tag by. Russell Martin and it remains 3 2 D back. So you roll the dice sometimes snake eyes. And now Snyder up there with a two ball two strike count. Now back in looking at Snyder. He had three sacrifices and he had five scoring fly balls. He had only struck out 87 times and on the Arizona club you're really a contact hitter when you've only struck out 87 times. So Bob figured I'll get the bunt down and steal myself an extra run. Came up empty. Two and two. When the Dodgers hit in the bottom of the sixth, Ethier, Ramirez, and Loney, and Reynolds nailed between third and home. And now Snyder has another three ball count. That's the third time, and he has punished the Dodgers the other two. Two out, you have the pitcher on deck. And got him. So a three and two breaking ball. And just like they blew the first inning, the D backs blow another opportunity in the sixth. So it remains D backs three, Dodgers two. Here are the 11 strikeouts by Max Scherzer. It started 
with Casey Blake in the first inning. Then it was Matt Kemp. Then he moved on to Angel Barroa. Then really got hot, took care of Ethier, Ramirez, and for good measure, he got Blake again. Then he got Kemp and DeWitt. Then he came back and got Barroa and Delwyn Young. And then the last one, a really puzzled Russell Martin. I didn't say what in the world was that pitch. That looked like a nice fastball up and in, and all of a sudden, it just moved in like an angry hornet. So Scherzer has struck out the side back to back innings. The Arizona record consecutive strikeouts is seven by Randy Johnson and he's done that three times. So we'll see now with Ethier, ball one. The major league record for consecutive strikeouts Tom Seaver struck out ten straight against a bad San Diego team at Shea. Interesting left the last ten batters of the game to give Seaver 19. But now shirts are perhaps wearying a little bit. Remember they got Roush up in the pen. Two balls and no strikes. And ball three. He has not walked anybody. This is only his third three ball count. And the other two came in the first inning when Ethier singled and Ramirez doubled. Three and oh. Strike. Three and one. So in direct contrast to the Dodgers, Kershaw nine. Three and one. And ball four. So that's a trouble sign for Bob Melvin. Chad Qualls is now up in the Arizona bullpen, but you can understand Melvin's reluctance to go into the bullpen. The Arizona pen has really been an arson squad. So he's staying with Scherzer, and here's Manny, who doubled in the first inning to set up two runs, struck out in the third. So the first walk comes in the sixth inning. And the Dodgers feel perhaps Schertz are now is starting to lose it. Ball one. Dodgers have four hits plus the walk. Interesting too during the strikeout stretch Dodgers were swinging and missing. They weren't fouling off pitches in five innings. The Dodgers have swung and missed 21 times. Manny has swung and missed three times. Though it's a tribute to Scherzer. One ball and no strikes to Manny. And that's going to be banged into right. And Upton was playing over towards the line. Has to go back to get it. So easily to third goes Ethier. And the Dodgers now first and third and nobody out. So the D-backs could have made it a lot easier for Scherzer. They had the bases loaded in the first inning with one out and left them. They had a leadoff double in the sixth. And they had him out on a squeeze play. And now when churches show signs of weakening the Dodgers have runners at first and third and Melvin still troubled. He sends Chris Snyder to the mound to consume some time. Chad Qualls down in the bullpen has a record of four and eight. Four and eight. And he's getting ready. But they will stay with Scherzer against Loney. Loney broke his bat, single to sounded to drive in two, and now here comes Melvin. So the walk was a pretty good sign that Scherzer had weakened, and reluctantly Bob makes his way out to the mound. With a bullpen that the D-backs have had, you can understand his reluctance. And now he's going to the pen. Boy, it was a great five innings for Max Scherzer, but it is still a nine-inning game. 
He winds up going out where he could win. He could have nothing to do with it or he could lose it. And of course he has to be troubled. The game is in the hands of the bullpen and we'll be back. On a warm Sunday afternoon let's put the freeze cam on Adam Dunn third inning on a three and two count pitch down and away and he is so big and so strong that he's able to hit a home run the other way into the bleachers in left center field home run at the time tied up the game though Adam talking to another very fair hitter in Manny Ramirez. Meanwhile Chad Qualls comes out of the pen to pick up a Max Scherzer sitting alongside of Dan Heron. So Scherzer goes out 94 pitches. It was a tremendous play of overall talent one walk and 11 strikeouts. And they give the ball to Chad Qualls who has lost eight. Chad born in Lomita still lives in Southern California went to school at the University of Nevada. First and third, Ethier at third, the tying run. Ramirez at first, and here is Loney. And a little foul ball out of play, 0 and 1. Then looking at the pass, James Loney, 1 for 5 against Chad Qualls. Loney broke his bat, drove in two runs in the first inning. Of course the albatross around James's neck is the fact that he's grounded into 23 double plays. 0 and 1. And lifted to right center that should be plenty deep enough. Ethier tagging. Young will make the throw cut off by Adam Dunn and the game is tied 3-3. So if he scores for the second time today Loney has driven in all three runs and that run is charged to Scherzer and Manny Ramirez at first also belongs to Scherzer. In case the thought crossed your mind with Ramirez he is two for two in stolen bases as a Dodger. Casey Blake has struck out twice against Scherzer so he has to be glad he's out of the game. Casey Blake is one for one against Chad Qualls. Max Scherzer the boy with a right eye blue and the left eye brown. Boys in the press box were dreaming up things about Max Scherzer. One of them was when he was filling out an application for his driver's license height, weight, color of hair, color of eyes, blue and red, <laughs> blue and brown. Real. Boy, he can pitch too. Oh, and one. Ground foul. Blake chasing one little down and away. Casey's had six RBIs in his last six games. So the boy from the show me state of Missouri from St. Louis and Chesterfield has shown us all he is quite a young pitching prospect for Arizona. Three three here in the sixth. One out. You can't tell with Manny with those droopy drawers that he wears he could be in motion and yet his uniform seems to be standing still. Oh and two. And a fly ball to center. Young is there. The so two down here. And the batter will be Matt Kemp. How about Qualls and Kemp. Well, Matt Kemp is two for two in the past against Chad Qualls. And then you have Blake DeWitt, 
Matt striking out a hair more than once a game. Hitting 288, 16 home runs, 69 runs batted in. Falls gives you a lot of different pitches. Ball one. Fastball, slider, changeup, and a splitter. Although the latest on that splitter, he uses that only against left hand batters. Last year in June, he was pitching for the Astros in Anaheim, got angry, threw a baseball into the stand in frustration, and he was suspended for three games and fined $3,000. He had allowed a bunch of runs, the Astros blowing a big lead, and he was just thoroughly mad about the way everything was going against him and fired the ball into the third deck. That's a strike. To look ahead, the D-backs will have call spot, then Drew and Eckstein. If anybody gets on, Adam Dunn. 3-3, three, three, bottom of the sixth, with so much at stake. One and two. Dodgers scored two in the first inning, but the D-backs got a run in the second on a home run by Snyder. They got a run in the third on a home run by Dunn, and then Reynolds single took second on an error by Manny Ramirez, and Snyder's double put them in front. The D-backs 3-2. However, Loney scoring fly ball cashed in Ethier, and we're 3-3. Another foul. Still one and two. Manny, a tiebreaker at first, two out. Still one and two. So the battle between Matt Kemp and Chad Qualls continues. Matt struck out in the first, went down again in the fourth, but that was against Scherzer. Three runs, five hits for the Dodgers. Three runs, eight hits for the D-backs. One and two. Got him. So for Matt Kemp, tough day as he strikes out three times. The Dodgers leave Ramirez. It means Scherzer is not responsible. And at the end of six, a 3 3 time. As we go to the seventh inning in a 3-3 tie, once Alex Romero has been announced as a pinch hitter, Joe Torre comes out of the dugout, and the Dodgers will make a double switch. Nomar Garcia Parra is going to come in, and since Barroa struck out, followed by Young strikeout, remember that's when Park came in, Garcia Parra is going to take over at third base for Casey Blake. Though I think Joe Bimel will be brought in to face Alex Romero and make it Hung Chi Kuo's coming in now. So Kuo and Nomar in the double switch and that immediately sends Alex Romero back to the dugout and as far as the records are concerned he's been in the game. We'll be back. Dodger baseball on FSN Prime Ticket is brought to you by your Southern California Ford dealers. See what's new at scforddealers.com. And by Jack in the Box. Try the new real fruit smoothie at participating restaurants. Seventh inning, 
And Hung Chi Kuo is ready on the mound. Chris Burke will now be batting for Alex Ramiro, who had been sent up there to bat for Chad Qualls. So Hung Chi with the remarkable set of numbers as far as strikeouts and walks. 94 strikeouts and 19 walks. Ball one to Burke. On deck, Stephen Drew. Chris Burke out of Louisville, Kentucky. Used to be with the Astros. One and one. Chris, 28 years old, went to school at Tennessee and was on the United States national team. He was an All-American when he was a volunteer. One ball and one strike. Ball two. Three runs, eight hits for the Dodgers. Three runs, five hits for the D-backs. Big game. And ball three. Waiting on deck, Stephen Drew. Pretty tough to be a left hand hitter and face Hung Chi Kuo will tell you about it. And ball four. So Chris Berg draws the walk. And now here's Stephen Drew. There have been 91 left hand batters facing Hung Chi Kuo. 91. He has struck out 42 of the 91 while walking two. So Stephen Drew has a challenge, but so does Quo. Stephen hitting 287. And a strike. Chris Burke, by the way, over there at first base is five for five in stolen bases. For Stephen Drew, a leadoff hitter. He has two sacrifices if you think in that way. On one. And fouled away. Oh and two. Stephen Drew hitting 295 against right handers and in the 260s against left handers. One for three today, single leading off the game. 0 oh and 2. Fouls a good fastball back. Drew is followed by Eckstein and then Dunn. Looking at Hun Chi Kuo working against Arizona. Drew is 2 for 7 against him. Dunn one for five with a home run. Oh and two. Chris Burke at first nobody out three three in the seven. And got him. A breaking ball Drew can't believe it shaking his head and down he goes. So 43 left hand hitters have struck out against Quo. 43 out of 92 batters. And David Eckstein coming up. And of course, the trick with Eckstein is to throw strikes. He gives you a problem at 5 6. Eckstein is 0 for 3, hit into a force play. Hit a long fly ball. Manny Ramirez made a fine running catch and grounded out. And whoops, a bad play at first base as Quo tries to throw over there. And Burke goes to second. So the D backs get a good break. Error charge to Quo. And they get that tiebreaker in position. The throw was a lob on a bounce 
And it just got away from Loney. That would be the second Dodger era. Manny Ramirez made an error in the fourth inning. So David Eckstein trying to pick up Chris Berg. And on deck, Adam Dunn. Nomar playing third now instead of Casey Blake, remember. And that's a ball one. And looking at Eckstein's numbers, hitting in the 240s against right hand pitching, but 333 against left handers. D backs are just one for seven with runners in scoring position. That includes the busted squeeze play. Fly ball to Manny, he started over, and Burke did not tag, so he has nowhere to go. Dodgers box that ball around on the infield, but no further advance. So now it's Adam Dunn. Adam Dunn. Dunn to repeat. One for five against Quo, and that one was a home run. Today on a three and one pitch, he doubled in the first inning. On a three and two pitch, he homered in the third. And on a three and one pitch, he grounded out. So he, as usual, has seen a lot of pitches. Baroa directly behind Burke, trying to take steps away from him. And there's a flare, but Baroa is under it. So no runs, no hits, an error, a man left. And at the end of six and a half innings, a 3 3 tie. Sure, take me out to the ball game. Well, first of all, there are only six left during the regular season, and that would be starting on the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st with the Giants, and then the 23rd, 24th, and 25th, and that will be that for the regular season. So blue skies, beautiful weather, and hope you make your plans to be with us somewhere along for the final six. Big John Roush coming out of the pen, and he'll be pitching to Blake DeWitt, Angel Barroa, and then Nomar. Roush is 6 feet 11, 255 pounds, out of Louisville, went to school at Moorhead State. And he was first team All State academic honors in four years in high school. And a strike to DeWitt. Big John was originally signed by the White Sox. Went to the Expos, the Nationals for four years, and then came to Arizona. High fly ball in the gap, slicing, and it's going to drop and bounce over the wall for the ground rule double for Blake DeWitt. So DeWitt goes two for three with that double. And the tiebreaker is out there with nobody out. And now you have Baroa, Garcia Para, and Martin trying to pick him up. Short hop and then kangarooed over the wall. For the Dodgers, they have doubles by Ramirez and now this one by DeWitt. So the batter is on Hell Baroa. The corners are up, meaning Reynolds and Dunn looking bunt. Now Angel shows bunt. Ball one. One ball and no strikes. If you said that Blake DeWitt tattooed John Rouch with a double. There have been a lot of tattoos on John Rouch, the bun foul. He has Olympic rings on his left ankle from being part of the gold medal team in Sydney, Australia. Rouch had to commemorate that. He has Roman numerals starting at his neck, going down his spine. That would commemorate his wedding day, September the 7th. So, 
Happy anniversary. And the bunt is down. It'll be done. Who dumps it? Everybody's safe. Two very big men, John Roush and Adam Dunn, and a very tiny result. There's the bunt. Watch this. Dunn just seemed to slip. Down he goes. So now the Dodgers have first and third. Nobody out. It'll be a sacrifice error charge to Dunn. And the batter will be Nomar, followed by Martin and Ethier. 3 3, bottom of the seventh, and the lead is there to be taken. D backs play the infield back. Ball one. One ball and no strikes to Nomar. So it's a terrible way. For a guy to be facing a situation like this on his wedding anniversary and ball two nope one and one on the inside corner. No mark can't believe it. Check in with Larry Boa. Three runs eight hits for the D backs three runs six hits for the Dodgers. And ball two. Russell Martin waiting on deck. On the back of Roush's neck, there are Chinese symbols. It means tall fire. Two and one. Breaking ball missed. So he's one pitch away from loading him up. Nomar hitting 234. Six home runs, 21 runs batted in. Remember, we told you about the Arizona bullpen. That's a strike. Arizona bullpen, the winning percentage last in the major leagues. The pen has 12 wins and 22 losses. They have Tony Pena and Doug Slayton heating up in a hurry. Three and two. Barrow is not going. And a high fly ball tagging up is DeWitt. The catch is dropped while in the act of throwing, however. The run is in. Barrow to second, and the Dodgers lead four to three. The D backs think that perhaps Blake DeWitt had left third too soon. They're also questioning Garcia Parra, but it was definitely dropped while in the act of throwing, so Nomar is definitely out. However, the Dodgers have Baroa at second, and they have a four to three lead. So Upton was trying to catch and throw, and as so often happens, you come up with a glove full of empty. 4-3 Dodgers. Out there at first base, Bob Melvin talking to, well, he's talking right now to Ed Rapuano. Joe Torrey talking to Larry Boa. So it was a fly ball to right field. It was caught. Garcia Parra is out. Meanwhile, DeWitt, who was at third, tagged and scored. And Baroa goes down to second when the ball is dropped while in the act of throwing. So the Dodgers already got a good break when Dunn slipped and fell on the bunt. And now Melvin is waiting to hear from Ed Rapuano. I think Melvin is probably more annoyed maybe about Baroa. Maybe Baroa, they think, left first, didn't really tag up. So Baroa will go all the way back to second base. Didn't stand a chance of going to third. But Melvin is not finished discussing. 
So a fly ball to right that was caught. And DeWitt brings in the run. We can show it to you again, but from long distance. You see DeWitt hesitating. He wasn't sure, and now comes in. And of course, what they're saying is that DeWitt did not properly tag up. And then Baroa tags up and goes to second, and the D backs lose that call as well. And the Dodgers lead 4 3. There has to be an error to explain the presence of Baroa at second, and the error will be charged to Upton for dropping the ball while in the act of throwing. So the Dodgers get two big breaks. Score one. And Russell Martin now trying to pick up Baroa. One out. There should be two. Martin has flied to right, grounded a third, and struck out. 0 for 3. Squirted up along first base. Roush underhands to Dunn. Baroa going to third. So two out, and Andre Ethier coming up. With a runner at third, as we always do, we check the numbers. John Roush has one wild pitch. And now Bob Melvin will not take any chances. He'll bring in the left hander, Doug Slayton, to pitch deep here. So, best we can say to John Roush, happy anniversary. And now he goes out. Clayton coming in. We'll be back. Left hander Doug Slayton has been called in specifically to get Andre Ethier. So we'll look back coming into this series. So Slayton, 0 and 3, picking up the pieces for John Rauch. Slayton out of Venice, California, went to Pierce Junior College. Doug pitched Friday night and allowed a couple of hits, but no runs. In fact, he faced Ethier in the eighth inning Friday night, and Andre singled. So the Dodgers have Baroa over a third. Two out, Dodgers lead 4 3. Foul down the line and peeling back into the crowd. When we go to the top of the eighth inning, don't go wandering off because Arizona will have Connor Jackson, Chris Young, and Mark Reynolds. Angel Barroa at third. Two out. Oh, and one to Ethier. In the dirt, one ball, one strike. Slayton does not have a wild pitch. Doug, fastball, curve, and change. Been with the D backs three years. Foul ball. We mentioned it the other night. Slayton has had bad knees ever since he was 16. In fact, he's had two surgeries on each knee. The first surgery when he was 16. He said he thinks it was the result of playing so much basketball on the courts near Venice Beach. One and two. Fastball, one hopper off the glove of Drew Lacardis fires too late. The run is in. So the Dodgers get yet another break. First, there was the error by Dunn. Then the fact that Upton drops the ball while in the act of throwing. 
And now a hard hit ground ball off the bat of Eve here that just eats up Stephen Drew. So it'll be an error charge to Drew. And for the Dodgers, let the good times roll. They're going to have to go to the bullpen. Augie Ojeda is going to take over at second base in a double switch. So Ojeda will play second and bat ninth. And the pitcher will be brought in and he'll go an X time spot and we'll be back. Dodgers scrambling for two runs here in the seventh after getting one in the sixth and have now taken a five to three lead. Loney broke his bat and had a two run single in the first inning. He had the scoring fly ball in the sixth. Snyder and Dunn solo home runs. A marvelous five innings for young Max Scherzer. Here's a look on that ball hit by Ethier. It just eats up Stephen Drew. And even though he recovered and fired, it was too late. And they will give Ethier a base hit, labeled too hot to handle. So Ethier a base hit and a run batted in. And now Tony Pena will face Manny Ramirez. 5 3 Dodgers trying to leave town with a game and a half lead over Arizona. A game and a half lead with 13 road games and six home games left. Though so it's been Scherzer, then Qualls, Roush, Slayton, and Pena. One ball and no strikes. Manny today double struck out and single. Manny batting 410. Facing Tony Pena, who's from the Dominican. And that's up. 2 and 0. Oh. Pena's 26. Been with the D backs three years. Six one two twenty. Two balls and no strikes. And ball three. So Scherzer went five plus. Qualls came in and gave up the tying run charge to Scherzer but Roush was very unlucky and is charged with two. Now they're going to walk Manny three and zero. Oh. So that's eleven at least eleven intentional walks for Manny since the first of August. And he has 13 intentional walks this year as a Dodger. So James Loney broke his bat, singled in two runs in the first inning, had the scoring fly ball where Ethier tagged and came home in the sixth. So James with three runs batted in. He has been giving the Diamondbacks a bad time anyway. So two on, two out, Dodgers lead by two. And fouled away. Since the 21st of August, Loney has piled up some hits. He has 26 hits. Andre Ethier has 25. Oh and one. Fastball away one and one. Corey Wade loosening up in the Dodger bullpen. We're in the seventh inning five three Dodgers. Dodgers trying to win their eighth in a row and duplicate their efforts back in April and May as Mark Sweeney waits on deck.
Bouncer speared nicely by Pena, and that's that. However, that for the Dodgers, two huge runs. Stephen Drew unable to handle a hot shot off the bat of Ethier. Upton dropping the ball while in the act of throwing. Dunn falling down on a bunt. 5 3 Dodgers. We go to the eighth inning, 5 to 3 Dodgers. Nancy B. Heffley serenading the Dodgers, and they're doing exactly what she asked. Earlier, when they were trailing 3 2, she played a great song from the play and movie on a clear day. She played Come Back to Me, and they tied up the game. Then, after scoring two, she dusts off another classic from the play Lil Abner. Jubilation T corn pone and there's a lot of jubilation here five three Dodgers in the eighth. Oh boy the voice of stubby K. Wow. Connor Jackson has walked struck out and singled one for two. And a fly ball slicing down the line Ethier in pursuit back in the seats. For Connor Jackson. Had that two out single in the fifth inning. And a walk in the first. In the first inning, when Connor Jackson walked, that loaded the bases with one out. Clayton Kershaw was in a lot of trouble, and he got Chris Young to pop it up to Loney, and then got Reynolds to ground out. Arizona is just one for eight with runners in scoring position. Fly ball to Ethier. One away. So certainly in this series and in the series we saw in Arizona Arizona was certainly ready to be taken. The only thing that was shocking Doug Davis pitched a very wobbly five in game one a week ago Friday and Davis got the victory and you thought uh oh Dodgers are four and a half back now they've got Harron and Webb and the Dodgers as unpredictable as ever. They first beat Heron, then they beat Webb. Then they looked to Heron, Webb, and Johnson in this series. They beat Heron and Webb, and Johnson can pitch. Fly ball into left center field. Trouble City, it's going to hit the wall. And into second base goes Chris Young. So Young, who had been 0 for 3, popped up with the bases loaded, struck out with a runner on. Now a one out bases empty double which I guess sells up exactly what's going on with the D backs. You know you can buy any reserve level ticket for Think Blue Week the Dodger Fan Appreciation Week that's the 19th through the 25th. You'll save ten dollars a ticket you'll be eligible for division series tickets before they go on sale to the public. For tickets visit Dodgers.com and use the promo code Think Blue. Big crowd on hand today. Well, they should be. Huge game. Paid attendance 54,137. 5 4, 1 3 7. Trying to see the Dodgers open up their lead to a game and a half and extend their winning streak to eight. So here's Reynolds in the dirt. Boy, what a save by Martin. Young holding at second. To complicate matters, watch Reynolds. He has to jump over it. And Martin is still able to come up with it. The modern day catcher is blessed with the equipment because that catcher's mitt is not like a stuffed mattress they used to have in the old days. It bends. And another almost wild pitch, 2 0 the count. Hung Chi Kuo trying to hold on to a two run lead. Reynolds has grounded out, singled and doubled, two for three. Reynolds, however, 0 for 5 against Kuo, and he has struck out three of his five at bats. Two and one. Reynolds very much involved in the ball game, scored in the fourth inning, but then remember doubled and stole third and was out on the squeeze bunt at tap that uh, came apart and Reynolds was caught and tagged out by Martin. 
Ball three. Down in the pen, Jonathan Broxton throwing behind Quo. Three and one to Reynolds. Justin Upton on deck. And ball four, so the tying runs are aboard with one out. Quo has walked two. Justin Upton has struck out twice and hit back to the box. He was also Justin guilty, Upton. remember, after catching the fly ball of dropping the ball while in the act of throwing. And that allowed Baroa to get to second, and Angel Baroa eventually scored. Dodgers were very fortunate in the seventh inning. So Quo and Martin putting their heads together. And of course, Martin reminding Quo how they've been pitching Upton today anyway. Upton actually is hitting a little bit better against left hand pitching, 259 to right handers, 243. He has 11 home runs, but they're not going to monkey around with him. They're going to bring in Broxton, apparently. And from the looks of things, Nomar, who came into the game, will be coming out of the game. And he's going to change gloves. That's what it is. So Nomar and Chin Lung Hu will come into the game at the same time. And it looks like Nomar is heading for first base. Yep, that was the change in the equipment. So the Dodgers change the infield a bit. Loney comes out of the game. Big Jonathan Broxton comes in, and we'll be back. The Dodgers rearrange the furniture. Chen Ling Hu takes over at second base. Blake DeWitt, who had been playing second, moves over to third. No more Garcia Parra, who had been playing third, moves over to first. And Jonathan Broxton coming in. If you're keeping score, put Broxton in Loney spot since James made the last out. Put Chin Lung Hu in Blake spot, which was also occupied by Quo. And all Nomar does was change gloves and hit ninth. For Arizona, they have certainly had golden opportunities all day, and they are one for nine with runners in scoring position, and that won't get it. So here is Upton with two on and one out. He has struck out twice, hit back to the box. The 20 year old hitting 245. Upton one for four in the past against Broxton. And ball one. Big crowd so quiet. Hard to believe 54,000 here. One and oh. You have two fellows that can run out there on the base paths. Ball two. Chris Young out at second base has stolen 11 and Mark Reynolds over at first is 10 for 10. Two and oh to Justin Upton. On deck catcher Chris Snyder. Broxton with 78 strikeouts, 21 walks. Upton has struck out 101 times. On the corner. Two and two. Bob Melvin is hoping he's just in time. One out, eighth inning, two on. Dodgers lead 5 3. Yeah. 
And he strikes out a third time. So the D backs are now one for 10 with runners in scoring position. As Broxton just blows him down. Nothing fancy. Just here, I'll throw it as hard as I can, and you swing as hard as you can, and let's see what happens. Now, Miguel Montero, a left hand hitting catcher, will come up and hit for Chris Snyder. Snyder has a home run and a double. Montero is hitting 273. He has four home runs, 17 runs batted in. Miguel Montero. The Montero. Becomes the third pinch hitter, although Romero, remember, never made it to the plate. Ball one. I was just thinking Matt Kemp and Justin Upton can console each other. They've each struck out three times today. 1 and 0 to Miguel Montero. Montero last year was a remarkable pinch hitter. Montero had 3 pinch hit home runs last year. He had 7 RBIs coming off the bench and he hit a cool 350. Two on, two out, eighth inning, 5 3 Dodgers. And ball three. On deck, with all the switching around, is Augie Ojeda. The 3 0 to Montero. And a strike. Three and one. Young at second, Reynolds at first with two out. Fouled away. Well, there's a little bit of a break for the D backs on the count. You have fellas who can run. Chris Young at second, Mark Reynolds at first, and they'll be going on the three and two picks. So the folks in blue are on their feet. Three and two. What'll he do? Runners ready to go, and Broxton off the rubber. There they go. Foul back. So we'll crank it up and try it again. Montero this year, not the magician that he was coming off the bench last year. He has three pinch hits, two RBIs, hitting just 200 as opposed to 350. So they'll try it again. Young ready to go from second. And of course, Reynolds at first. The possible tying run. There they go. Got him. And that's the way it's been going for Arizona since the first inning. They are 1 for 11 with runners in scoring position, and that was 100 miles an hour. 5 3 Dodgers. John Broxton comes out of the Dodger bullpen and gets it done as he strikes out Justin Upton and Miguel Montero. Montero stays in the game and takes over behind the plate. 
So there are a lot of differences between the two clubs but basically the one that usually is overlooked you talk about home runs hitting you talk about starting pitching but the difference between the two bullpens is the big difference between the two teams. Plus it would appear certainly that the Dodgers are better situational hitters. Oh and one to Chin Lung Hu. So who Kemp and DeWitt in that order against Tony Pena. It's been Scherzer who was magnificent then calls Roush Slayton and Pena and Roush was very unlucky on the day that he celebrated a wedding anniversary. They played fast and loose with the ball. Oh and two. One and two. Tony Pena trying to get some outs. When the D backs come up, last call in the ninth, Ojeda drew X9, and if anybody gets on, done. Little fly ball to right field. Upton can't play it. And who will settle for a pop fly single? The crowd imitating owls as they give it the who didn't get much of a swing but you don't have to if you can find an open space and who drops it into right field. So now the batter is a very hungry Matt Kemp. Kemp has struck out three times all three no. Two of the three against Scherzer. Then Qual struck him out in the sixth inning. <laughs> oh, and one. Mad hitting 287. 16 home runs, 69 runs batted in, checking with Boa. Kemp averaging a strikeout a game. He now has struck out 139 times. Ground ball to short, Drew. The shovel for one. That's it. Ojeda never could turn to make the play. So Kemp hits into the force play. Drew to Ojeda. Blake DeWitt. Blake DeWitt started at second, finishing up at third. Blake singled to right in the second inning, struck out in the fourth, and doubled in the seventh. His double a one hopper over the wall in left center. That seventh inning was a disaster for the Diamondbacks. If you weren't with us, DeWitt doubled. Baroa bunted. Adam Dunn charging the bunt along with John Roush, and Dunn just slipped, fell down, tied up with Roush. So Baroa was saved, and DeWitt reached third. Then after that, Garcia Parra hit the fly ball to right. Upton caught it. DeWitt tagged and scored. Upton then dropped the ball while in the act of throwing. That allowed Baroa to go to second. Eventually he came home on a hard ground ball that got away from Stephen Drew, ruled a base hit, and the Dodgers had the two go ahead runs, 5 3. Five runs, eight hits, two errors for the Dodgers. Three runs, nine hits, two errors for the D backs. We mentioned earlier that the Dodgers have done a far better job in situational hitting. All you have to do is closely examine this three game series. Joe Torrey's team, seven for 21 with runners in scoring position. 333 batting average, good for 17 runs batted in. We'll tell you about Arizona in a moment. 
And a drive into center going back on the ball is Young. He will make the catch and back to first goes Kemp. Anyway, Arizona, as if they need to be reminded, with runners in scoring position, the D backs are three for 21. That is a 143 batting average for Arizona. In all of those 21 situations, they've managed to score three runs. And what kills them, and you keep looking at it day after day, with runners in scoring position, 10 strikeouts. So here's Baroa with Kemp at first, and they have to worry about Matt trying to steal. And there he goes. The pitch is low, the throw is high, and he's in there. Matt now has stolen 33. So Montero, who just got into the game, couldn't get the throw down enough, and Kemp steals it. So now Baroa trying to pick him up. Baroa has struck out twice, and then the fateful sacrifice when Adam Dunn slipped and went down, and that set the pattern for the inning. And the inning so far is the game. To repeat, the D backs in the ninth are due to send up Ojeda, Drew, and then we'll see. Pena's in a, the number two slot. One ball and one strike. Tomorrow night, the Dodgers and the Padres from Petco Park. One and two. Baroa has struck out twice today. The pitching for the Padres series, Maddox and Back, Corroda and LeBlanc, and Lowe and Estes. Sean Estes has been activated. One and two. That's going foul. When the Dodgers last played the Padres, you remember during that series, Padres had, I think it was four players in the starting lineup from Portland. We'll see if that's the kind of a lineup Bud Black puts out against the Dodgers starting tomorrow night. Meanwhile, the D backs will be against the Giants. The only difference is. Well, not much difference, the Giants and the Padres. Ground ball to Drew. And that'll be that. Okay, we're heading for the ninth. Ojeda, Drew, and a hitter for Pena. The Dodgers lead 5-3. As we go to the ninth inning with the Dodgers leading the D-backs 5-3, just another thought, the Dodgers going on the road from here to play San Diego, the Dodgers have beaten the Padres 7 out of 12. Arizona will go to San Francisco. They've beaten the Giants 7 out of 12. The one difference, really, and it kind of jumps at you, when the Dodgers are in Colorado, they are eight and seven with Colorado while Arizona is playing Cincinnati and Arizona has beaten Cincinnati seven out of eight. So there's a lot to study between now and the end and that's a strike to Augie Ojeda. Augie born here in Los Angeles last we checked lived in Southgate but went to school at the University of Tennessee. 5 8. Ground ball gobbled up nicely by Blake DeWitt. 
So a nice play by Blake to smother that one. That was a real grass cutter. That didn't so much bounce as it did slither to third. One away. So DeWitt doing a little gardening and the batter now will be Stephen Drew and on deck Chad Tracy to bat for Pena. Stephen Drew one for four as Trace waits on deck. So the Dodgers two outs away from duplicating what they did at the end of April win eight in a row. The D backs are two outs away from not only being swept but losing 11 out of 15. Oh and one. I guess one of the big differences as we get down to the wire. Remember when the Dodgers were just playing awful. Losing on the road to Philadelphia Washington lost eight in a row. They only lost a half a game in the standings. They could have been buried during that stretch and Arizona failed to shovel the dirt. One and two. Drew with 16 home runs has struck out twice. He had one tough strikeout with a runner at third and two out in the fourth inning. So Broxton picks up his third strikeout and the Dodgers are one out away from enjoying a one and a half game lead as Tracy comes up with the plate. Three strikeouts for Broxton. So the Dodgers went to Arizona, lost the first game, and then beat Harron and Webb. And then the D-backs came here, and the Dodgers beat Harron and Webb, and then they beat the Arizona bullpen. So here is Tracy with his foot in the door, and Adam Dunn representing the tying run on deck. And a strike, and Tracy doesn't like it. Chad Tracy is one for eight in the past against Broxton. So the Dodgers in the penthouse, 0 and 1. One ball and one strike. 54,137. And make your plans the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st with the Giants, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th with San Diego. The last six games of the regular season at home. And the D backs down to their last strike. Last year, the Dodgers beat Arizona 10 of 18. And if they hold on today, they will have beaten them 10 of 18. One ball and two strikes. Two and two. Crowd on its feet trying to root Broxton home. Big at bat for Tracy trying to stay alive for Big Adam Dunn. Two and two. Overthrowing that time, trying to get a little extra on it. So Big John goes all the way. Big pitch. You know he doesn't want to look at Dunn representing the time run. Three and two to Tracy. Now back 
just to increase the tension. Five runs, eight hits, two errors for the Dodgers. Three runs, nine hits, two errors for the D backs. By the way, in watching Broxton attempt to close, Takashi Saito threw breaking balls today and reported he felt fine. So now we'll know more about it tomorrow. But he threw very, very well, very easy. Three and two. And a line drive base hit down the line. DeWitt just missed flagging it. And by the time Manny can wrestle that thing into his glove, Tracy is at second base. And again, here comes somebody with a runner in scoring position. And that somebody is Adam Dunn. So the D backs left Adam Young in scoring position in the eighth game. inning. Adam and they have one last shot with Dunn. Adam Dunn has only faced Broxton once. 0 for 1, he struck out. He also walked twice against him. So it has come down to this. Dunn on a 3 1 pitch doubled into the left field corner in the first inning. On a 3 and 2 pitch, homered in the bleachers to left center. And then grounded out and popped up. And ball one. On deck, Connor Jackson. Remember that big game Arizona played against the Cardinals? They were down in the ninth inning. Connor Jackson singled in the tying run and Dunn doubled in the winning run. Curveball in there. One and one. Dunn 36 home runs, 89 runs batted in. Ball two. Tell you, it's got to be tough. You're down there. The area right in front of home plate is both sunlight and shadow. Then you have the spider work of shadows from the light tower. And then somewhere through the corner of that spider web comes a fastball anywhere from 95 to 100 miles an hour. And ball three. Now done. This is the fourth time today he's had a three ball count. Double three and one homered three and two grounded out three and one. Chin Lung Hu playing a shallow right field. And ball four. Dodgers appeal at third no swing says Ed Hickox. So the tying runs are aboard. And now Joe Torrey is going out there to talk to Broxton with Connor Jackson the batter. Earlier in this series Torrey went to the mound and then came back without removing the pitcher. Jeff Salazar comes out of the dugout the left hand hitter. And Torrey is going out there just to instruct Broxton. There's no action in the Dodger bullpen. So Salazar will come out on deck. Connor Jackson today walked in the first inning, struck out, singled, and flied to right. Connor Jackson. Is three for eight in the past against Jonathan Broxton. Broxton has now made 30 pitches. His high this year, 33. So two on the tying runs, two out, and here's Connor. And breaking ball strike. 
Jackson 12 home runs 72 runs batted in. On one. One ball and one strike. Chad Tracy at second Adam Dunn at first giving way to the runner Salazar. Salazar the tying run. One ball one strike. And line drive. Oh what a diving catch by Nomar. What a way to finish. No more Garcia Parra frustrating Connor Jackson and the D backs having made a rare position play at third moving to first and takes what would have been perhaps a double away from Jackson and perhaps even two runs. Well the Dodgers did it and the D backs didn't. And the Dodgers sweep the series, and they'll be heading for San Diego, one and a half games in front of the Diamondbacks, who will be heading for San Francisco. The Dodgers will not see Jake Peavy, and we understand the D-backs will see Tim Lincecum. The player of the game, Jonathan Broxton, it was tough, but he finally got off the hook on that great play by Nomar. We'll be right back. The Dodgers lead the Diamondbacks, their biggest lead of the year. The only other time they're in first place, April the 4th, but now they lead by a game and a half with 19 games left. 13 on the road starting tomorrow night in San Diego, and then six home games left with the Giants and the Padres. Couple of notes among other things. The D backs struck out 30 times in the three games. One of the big reasons why they were swept. Their failure to hit with runners in scoring position, just one for 11. So the Dodgers sweep, move on, but the race is yet to be run. And the Dodgers win at 5 to 3. Tomorrow, Greg Maddox and Chin Sung back down in San Diego, right here on Prime Ticket. And until then, for all of us, for all of you, a very pleasant good afternoon.